All right, okay. Good morning. Welcome to uh, Strix's webinar on a quick start to e-commerce within the furniture industry. Uh, my name is Paul Cunnington. I'm the general manager for UK and Ireland. And Strix is an operation with some 90 staff. It's been operating in the e-commerce space for over 12 years and has a range of clients from large ones uh, to small ones. One of the things we pride ourselves on is our ability to integrate uh, standard e-commerce tools, make them special to give our clients or partners, as we call them, a competitive advantage in their market. So today we have uh, Boris Scrabber, who is the CEO for Strix. He's going to talk about um, the factors that affect the furniture industry um, at this time. We have Carolina Polak, who's head of marketing, in case there are specific marketing questions, and myself uh, to cover the, the territory in terms of uh, geographic questions about the UK and Ireland. So why are we holding this event? Well, COVID-19 is making the, friend, the furniture industry realize that it needs to find better solutions for digital selling. What are we going to talk about? We're going to talk about digital selling techniques to create a positive sales experience. It is much more important now than ever before to ensure that people who take the time and trouble to come to your website actually stay, have a good experience, and ideally buy. Questions. Interaction in these kinds of webinars is very important. So please interrupt us. What I uh, want to do is um, to make sure that the communication is clear. We've actually silenced your microphones. However, on the right hand side, you will see a chat box. And at the bottom, like most chat boxes, you can type a question. So my other role is, is as a moderator. And what I will do is um, if somebody asks a question, I will interrupt. Uh, I'll make sure that everybody has heard the question by speaking it out and then ask one of the presenters to answer the question. So if there's nothing else, then what I'd like, now like to do is to hand over to Boris uh, to kick off this event. Well, thank you for this uh, for this introduction. Uh, my name is Boris Kraba. Uh, I'm the founder and CEO of Strix. Strix is uh, a magento agency, e-commerce agency, focused on uh, delivering solutions for different type of uh, customers. Whereas, uh, as Paul mentioned, our main goal is uh, a focus on adjusting and preparing the uh, the platform based on specific customer needs um, and expectation of uh, people who are doing the purchases the purchases online. We've got over 12 years of experience. So today we'll try to show you uh, our experience with furniture industry. However, we also have an experience working with um, different brands, uh, starting uh, with uh, Nestle, where we support them with the Lucha Gusto uh, brand. We also work for Kingfisher, for a Castorama, um, uh, for a Castorama project. But today we would like to show you what are the challenges of the furniture industry and how um, Magento and how we can help you uh, implementing and adjusting e-commerce uh, platform. Before we start talking about the, the platform uh, and the implementation, we can give you a few details about what's happening right now with the digital uh, transformation. Uh, and I give it back uh, to you, Paul, uh, so you can uh, so you can present and show what is the situation right now. Thank you. So on to the next slide. Um, right, there was a study done in 2017, and it was looking at the trends that influence uh, purchasing factors in the furniture industry, and it was trying to project those forward to 2030. Now, what we think is that COVID-19 and this lockdown procedure has forced everybody to rethink how they live their lives and what they do to buy goods and uh, live their lives in every in everyday, um, simple uh, and safe manner. So the 2013, we would suggest, has become 2020. 
if you look at it, then clearly what's important is the opportunity to view, test and purchase the product immediately. So this is a challenge. If you're into digital selling, how do you enable somebody to view and test? You know, so quality is an issue there. Getting the website right, making it effective is very, very important. I think most, most digital solutions and platforms now enable you to buy 24 hours a day. Um, but I think that sometimes uh, for certain industries, the returns and exchange systems are probably a bit generic and maybe not specific enough for the furniture industry. So again, an area um, that needs to be looked at. Uh, I would like to think that most digital solutions actually offer personalized promotion and sales activities, but they can always be done smarter. And last but not least, obviously, customer orientated service. So uh, those, those are the, the factors that came out of the trend survey. And what does that mean? So if we come on to the next slide. What is important to you when buying ready to assemble furniture? Quality and performance came out as most important, as does price. People use the web to make sure they're buying effectively and they're buying the right stuff. So presentation and interaction is very important uh, for you uh, as a vendor to your customers. Uh, technology, what is it made from? Uh, next important, but look at it. Brand, style and colour are right at the bottom. So it's the relationship with you as a vendor that comes out tops above the product, uh, some of the product uh, facets and characteristics. But I think that's, I think that's as much as we want to really talk about in terms of the overall market. What I'd now like to do is pass back to Boris to talk a bit more about the challenges. Yeah, so knowing like, uh, what people are looking for or what are the key factors for them to make the decision, we can discuss some challenges and some solutions for uh, for furniture business once uh, they start to uh, sell online or once they work on improvement of the online sales. So first of all, uh, as you have seen, uh, there is a huge um, demand for um, product information. Uh, for customers. So in order to make the decision if the quality is good uh, of the product, if this product is the product I'm looking for, you need to be able uh, on one side uh, to manage the, the this uh, digital catalog, uh, on the other hand to really provide as much data as possible in order to help people uh, to make their um, decision. So one of the key factors and the key challenges is uh, to implement an efficient management um, of this digitalization process where furniture business also covers a lot of different variants, colors, uh, uh, sizes of the products. And people, when they make the decision, they must be sure that they are selecting the right, the right type of product. The second challenge which we identify um, uh, is uh, if furniture business is a little bit different comparing, for example, to fashion or DIY. First of all, products usually um, they come uh, with very with different variants and uh, they consist of uh, composite product. So, for example, you can have multiple colors or you can have a multiple uh, parts. So, a bed. Uh, it's not only a bed, it's uh, headboards, uh, it's the base, it's the mattress. So there's a lot of um, a lot of options. And uh, once you implement e-commerce solution, you need to be able to recreate this complexity in the way that customers can understand and configure um, the product. On the other hand, uh, furniture business uh, often means uh, multiple warehouses uh, and pickup options. So um, quite often uh, when you buy furniture, uh, you need to be uh, aware that uh, there is a local warehouse or there is an uh, offline shop, brick and mortar shop, which has part of the uh, products uh, locally. So uh, the system must support a multiple warehouse um, uh, solution. The one of the things which users also um, marked as important are returns and complaints. Uh, it's easy to buy a pair of shoe and return the pair of shoe if they are not the right size or not the right color. But once you be, buy a big wardrobe, it's not that easy thing to return it. So on one side, you need to be sure that this is the wardrobe you're looking for. 
On the other hand, uh, you need to provide customers with easy process of returns and complaints uh, of the product so they feel comfortable about doing the purchase, uh, purchase online. So some features related to returns, some features related to um, order management are also a big, big challenge once you think about the uh, implementation. The last thing uh, um, is also the um, option to uh, present an online catalog, uh, to present inspiration, to show customers how this furniture is going to look like in their house, uh, considering uh, their colors that they like, the carpet, the walls that they have. So it is important to be able not only to present the product, but present all the um, uh, in, in inspirations that can help users uh, select and choose the uh, right product. So how can Magento support this uh, online sales and why Magento is a good solution for um, furniture business? First of all, Magento supports complex sales uh, architecture. So it is possible to recreate uh, uh, even very complex uh, situation that you can have in case of furniture business. When you can have a multiple websites, uh, multiple store and store views, to present the product in different um, currencies in different brands uh, with some uh, local presence. So look from our experience, Magento allows uh, even for one company to implement um, many websites for different brands, still working with one integration, still working on the one system to, uh, to support this complex uh, architecture. Where on the other hand, Magento also supports uh, a multi-warehouse, uh, multi-source inventory support. Um, so it is possible to uh, work with different uh, sources of the product, like your own warehouse, uh, your brick and mortar shops, or uh, an external uh, companies who can handle your, uh, your warehouse or your sales. Working also uh, with the reservation, so once uh, an order is placed and you wait for the payment, Magento can support reservations of this uh, of this product just to make sure that the customer receives the product. Also supporting the multiple warehouses, uh, so you can have um, different locations when you have your, where you have your products, and Magento can support sales considering those multiple websites, multiple locations uh, locations of the product. So for example, if someone selects a wardrobe and you have this wardrobe in your central warehouse as well as the local store that is nearby a customer, it is possible that Magento will make a decision to uh, process the order and to um, make the reservation and uh, make the sales based on the stock of this local store uh, in order to save money and time uh, for delivery since the wardrobe is already is already uh, there with the integration with external marketplaces and multiple websites it allows you to create a very uh, efficient solution to cover not only your own shop but also a sales on uh, different online channels like marketplaces or different uh, different countries uh including um, support for uh, for this local um, uh, local pickup uh, we know that many of the um, furniture uh, companies they have or they usually have some local local shops um, so the online in case of uh, furniture is very much related to so-called omni channel so customers can uh, check the products online. They're interested in checking if they're available somewhere else, somewhere nearby, so they can they can see uh, how they look like. Uh, or once they make an order, they don't want to receive a shipping. But they want to pick up in store that is closest to the location. So in this case, Magento can uh, deliver a very flexible solution uh, to help customers make the mm, uh, make the decision. Um, this challenge of having a very complex uh, product uh, system when product can be a configurable product, uh, which means that customer is uh, selecting uh, different details about the product, like color, material, size of the product. Magento supports a various type of uh, various type of product, starting with a simple product when you can have just one chair one color, one size, uh, up to bundles. So you can have uh, 
table with six chairs and you can decide that customers can configure this uh, um, this bundle and decide how many chairs they need for uh, for a specific uh, for a specific table. So this uh, this different options of um, of products allows us uh, as an agency to really implement uh, very uh, very uh, detailed solution that solves all the challenges of uh, of selling a complex furniture furniture product. Mm, what's specific about Magento? Magento comes with an option uh, of a flexible uh, imports. So it is possible on one side to import uh, product details, so all the attributes, uh, images, uh, and descriptions, as well as videos, uh, some files uh, with the instructions uh, uh, or images uh, presenting presenting the product. So it's it's a very powerful solution that uh, allows you build a very complex um, communication with the customer. On one side, inspiring the customer with uh, um, with your product. On the other hand, uh, making sure that uh, all the details of the product configuration is done properly, and the customer is buying the product he's uh, he's looking for. Where in today's world, this um, uh, online sales is not only just selling the product on your own uh, channel, on your own shop, but it's also selling the product uh, on external marketplaces like Amazon or eBay, or promoting the products in uh, external comparison uh, systems like, for example, Google Merchant Center. So from one central place, you can sell products on your own soap shop as well as integrate it with eBay and Magento and uh, Magento with Amazon and um, uh, make your products available for uh, for the users who are usually making their uh, sales on them. Uh, on those marketplaces. With uh, support of uh, ready-made integrations, it really converts Magento into a very powerful solution where it's not only an online shop with uh, some basic features, but by using um, a wild range of uh, external integration, you can really uh, change Magento into the system that you really need, um, uh, considering Payments methods, uh, payment option, considering the delivery uh, of your product, as well as some marketing uh, systems or marketing information system, as well as fraud uh, fraud detection. So the um, the fact that Magento is uh, uh, one of the most popular platform allows uh, us and customers to really tailor the the implementation and. Uh, Instead of making very expensive um, custom implementation, we can use ready systems uh, to support uh, to support some features. Uh, what's important in today's um, uh, sales activation is to have uh, an option to uh, extensively promote your products. And Magento comes uh, with a very advanced uh, option to build a lot of different type of uh, roles. Uh, in furniture business, this uh, promotion is uh, important in order to increase the sales. So if the customer is buying just one sofa, we want to promote some other products. So he, he buys a full set of the products that is going to fit uh, fit into his uh, fit into his room. And on the other hand, we are increasing the the average value of the of the basket and sales. So here, Magento comes with many different uh, different uh, options to set up uh, promotions. Uh, and make sure that uh, that the customer is not finishing the visit just with one purchase, but is uh, extending the shopping cart and buying uh, buying many products. Boris, uh, I, I do have a, a question here from uh, Jakob. Um, he uh, uh, he's asking, what is the best way to market uh, an e-commerce website? I assume that from that that we're talking about. How do you tell people that um, you you have a, an e-commerce platform? Okay. Um, on one side, um, before you tell anybody about the platform, you need to make sure that it's implemented. You've got all the right uh, the right type of content. Uh, so working on the content in the first stage. Uh, 
uh, allows you to make sales. On the other hand, um, good content um, uh, allows you to uh, to have a right type of position in Google, which attracts customer, and then also working on the campaigns to invite uh, to invite your customer. So starting an online shop, uh, it's more like a starting a shop in the garage. So you're not going to have a lot of the customers coming to your garage unless you promote it and you show people that um, that you have an interesting product, that the product are uh, presented presented uh, the right way. So in order to promote promote the, the shop first, you need to work on a very good content and then work on uh, promotion, uh, on different types of promotion, starting with Google, starting with uh, with different campaigns to uh, to attract the customer. But in order to get success first line, you need to have a good um, a good and stable platform with the right content that will convince people to buy buy the product. Uh, just as you presented at the beginning, this uh, product information, uh, the decision of making sure that it's a good quality product, that the, the product uh, fits into, into the room, that I'll be able to return the product are key factors in making making decision. So it's not only about making promotion and getting a lot of traffic, but really um, building the conversion. So uh, converting this traffic into, uh, into the sales, but uh, by right type of uh, content. Thank you, Boris. Uh, I hope, Jakob, that uh, answered your question. If not, uh, feel free to chat. Okay. Presenting some of our case studies from uh, from furniture business, um, we hope we'll be able to show you the, the flexibility of Magento or how we adjusted uh, uh, Magento. The first case uh, is the case of uh, Shinaka Furniture, uh, which is selling uh, high quality uh, wood made uh, uh, products. And they had a few challenges uh, on one side to present the product. So we've been working with them uh, quite extensively on having an advanced uh, content management system. So the company is having a lot of um, inspiration, uh, a lot of uh, images, a lot of renders presenting their product uh, in the real, uh, real life uh, rooms. So the goal was to inspire the customers and show them the inspiration as well as present the product that were have been used with the um, uh, with the inspiration. So with Magenta, we managed to uh, deliver not only an online shop but also a system that allows them to manage to manage content, inspire people, and then convert them into uh, into an online sales. Uh, we've been working with them also quite extensively on uh, product information. So each of the product is having a lot of details about uh, the size, uh, making uh, sure that um, customer understands uh, the details and specific uh, specific features of this uh, uh, of the product, even with icons. So you can see, for example, that um, this particular product does not require assembling uh, that is uh, well mounted. Or if you look even at the technical data, it's clearly presented uh, uh, which of this dimension is uh, deep height and uh, width, uh, which not necessarily always is understood by the, by the customer. So we spent a lot of time on making sure that uh, if we present the product, uh, the customer is going to be 100% sure about uh, the details. And uh, once he's making the decision, uh, he'll be uh, he'll be aware of the details. So, for example, we've got the information that uh, this particular product is made with solid wood, uh, and it has a front panels made uh, made of made of solid wood. So all those doubts question that the customers usually have once they talk to salesperson we've been trying to convert them to an online uh, presentation so the customer before he clicks and before he orders he's sure about the details uh, which on one side increases sales on the other hand it reduces the um, the returns and uh, complaints so since we have uh, less misunderstanding of the uh, of the product and we've done whatever is possible to 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 make sure that the customer is uh, is receiving the right type the right type of information uh, what's specific about this implementation is also a, a very deep integration with Elasticsearch uh, search engine um, in order to uh, recommend some products. Uh, so when someone uh, starts to type in 
the solutions we are able to recommend him and um, and show him what kind of products we have as well as also uh, having some some recommendation and support uh, when people start to type in very generic uh, question like nice chair or chair um, and it's hard to present a specific product and we need to deliver some information in order for user to to browse and uh, and learn about the, about the products and the assortment of this uh, of this shop um, this implementation also has an interesting business model where uh, Shinaka is not having only their own um, uh, brick and mortar shops, but they also work uh, with uh, other partners where their products are sold. So uh, we've made a solution to support an offline sales. So once a person uh, is making an order, the, per the customer can select a third party location for pickup. Uh, and because of it, it's, uh, we extended the list of the, um, of the pickup locations and, uh, and uh, improved uh, the delivery because customers can feel more secure that uh, within their territory they will receive and they will get a local support uh, and some local uh, place when, where they can pick up, uh, pick up the product uh, for free. So, uh, those uh, specific um, details um, and requirements uh, were possible on one side because of Magento architecture, on the other side uh, because it's, a, it's an open platform that we were able to customize. A second case um, uh, is uh, Headboards, uh, which is one of the leading UK uh, manufacturer of, uh, of custom, custom headboards uh, uh, and beds. Um, their biggest challenge uh, was a very complex uh, product uh, that customers can um, customize. So by implementing Magento and extending Magento support for, uh, for configuration, the customers can really select uh, from um, different uh, fabric range um, uh, that is offered. Uh, from different uh, uh, details that, uh, that the customer can uh, can select once making an order, and uh, with um, this uh, support from Magento for bundles and configurable products, we are able to calculate the price uh, live based on the selection of the, um, uh, of the customer. So the job that is usually done by salesperson brick and model shop uh, who ask the details uh, how what kind of fabric you're looking for um, here you can do it uh, online you can see the preview of uh, of the color you have selected you can see how each of the option that you select is changing the final um, uh, the final price so it's quite extensive way of uh, of configuring the product uh, and um, and allowing uh, headboards to present very complex uh, custom product um, uh, to an online to an online sales. Again, Magento with with different type of products allowed us to uh, to implement uh, to implement uh, such a solution. The third case um, uh, for furniture is a brand called Bemondi. This brand uh, has a very specific model where they have a lot of their products uh, that uh, are still being either produced or shipped. So using multi-warehouse, we are using a virtual where, um, warehouses of the product that uh, are not existing yet. And the company is still producing this product or importing this product in order to buy um, buy from the future warehouse uh, of the product where we know the date when the product will be delivered, when the product will be ready to sell. And we're allowing customers to make the sales based on this virtual virtual warehouse of the future um, of the future product where the order is a little bit different because the customer makes an order right now um, knowing that the product will be available from specific uh, from specific date and will be delivered uh, um, will be delivered uh, will be delivered in the future this project has also an advanced um, uh, setup for uh, search engine optimization 
based on the specific requirements and uh, unique um, strategy for uh, for online promotion, we were able to adjust Magento to present the product exactly as they would like to to have them and be able to um, to be more competitive uh, in Google uh, by presenting the uh, the specific URLs and specific uh, support for for uh, search, engine, uh, search engine optimization. So again, the flexibility of Magento allows to uh, to prepare it uh, exactly based on the customer need and implement by this a unique strategy uh, and competitive strategy um, for, product, uh, for product promotion. Mm, we usually, when we look at the customer, uh, there is a magic question also how to approach the implementation, how to start the implementation, you know, how to come up with all those uh, specific details which will allow um, a customer to be more competitive once, uh, once selling furniture product uh, online. We have created um, workshops where we are able to work with the customer to, um, uh, and cover uh, three main areas of, uh, of the implementation in order to work out a unique strategy and uh, prepare for, uh, for the implementation. On one side, understand the, the specific of this, uh, of this implementation. On the other hand, uh, be able to deliver a unique strategy. So we're covering uh, three important uh, areas. On one side, a clear vision uh, of the shop and its um, products uh, selling and promotion. On the other hand, uh, we are covering digital product journey. So how the product uh, uh, shows up in the company, how, how, it's, uh, how it's converted into a digital product, how it's presented, how it's ordered and how it's uh, how it's returned and we also we're also covering a business uh, unique policies like uh, promotion policy or um, delivery delivery policy in this way we can work out um, details for the for the implementation so going through the vision uh, we try to once we do the implementation we try to work and understand uh, what are the available resources what are the markets what are the target groups of our activities what are the potential risks of the of the implementation at the level of um, operating operating fundamentals so in, in in this way we are creating and building a clean uh, vision uh, of the project uh, clean um, clear market goals which allows us to to focus on the on the implementation we also cover uh, the product understanding the business processes that are happening um, in the back office uh, of the company. So how the products are um, ordered, how the products are prepared for uh, for sales. On the other hand, we are covering a user side. So how the users are looking for those products, what kind of uh, purchasing missions they have and purchasing challenges they have, how they physically make an order and how this order is also uh, proceed on the um, back office. So how, how it's prepared, how it's delivered uh, to the customer and how the customer can, can return the product. So this um, process allows us to deliver functionalities uh, on each level of this uh, journey. Um, both for the back office, so for the company to be effective in their operations, as well as on the user side uh, to give the user maximum satisfaction and uh, the best experience of not only looking for products, but also purchasing, receiving the product and uh, uh, returning the product just in case if it's, um, if it's necessary. And based on, on this process, we're applying um, a business unit policies. So we cover pricing and sales management policies, covering content and communication strategy, uh, warehouse management and uh, product delivery um, experience policies. And in this way, we are uh, achieve, achieving um, a very uh, complex understanding of the project, both on the vision as well as the processes and the um, business units uh, policies. And we can focus on delivering um, uh, delivering uh, a solution that is going to fit uh, into the vision, into the processes that are happening, uh, happening in the back office, front office, as well as supporting uh, individual uh, units uh, uh, policies. 
And here our like one of the basic principles we have, uh, we try to approach uh, in an agile way. Uh, so it's better, we believe it's better to start with something that is uh, working, not necessarily imperfect, uh, but we can focus on uh, focus on improving uh, the model and developing developing a better a better solution. So we always try to start with something something simple at the beginning that uh, delivers all the features, and then we focus on on improving and getting more and more um, uh, more and more uh, solutions. In this way, the project is quite fast. If you look at the time to to the first momentum when we when we go live, uh, and uh, we can focus on on improvements in the uh, in the future. We've also Boris, prepared. Boris, uh, just a question here from uh, Evelina. Um, it, it's two parts actually. Um, mm -hmm. What the first part is uh, how to present uh, furniture in e-commerce well. So I guess it's asking about how do you make it, uh, how do you get the quality, or um, how does it, how does it, how is it effectively presented mm -hmm. in an e-commerce side? And the second one is uh, about preparation of descriptions and managing product information within the furniture industry. Um, I think you've, you've answered some of these, but it might be well worth just recapping on some of the points you made earlier, just to answer those two questions. Yeah, uh, I'll get back to this slide. Uh, so in order to present the products, uh, well, we need to understand the user side. So how user is uh, looking for a specific category of the products. So for example, if it's a sofa, you need to understand uh, what factors are important for him when he's selecting the sofa. Is it the, the material, the fabric, the size, the style of the sofa? And once we understand what are the, the customer needs, uh, based on this, we can design a product uh, uh, information template. So we can decide uh, what kind of details regarding sofas uh, are important for customers to make the decision. And based on this, uh, prepare the, um, the product page. Uh, with this approach, if we are answering all the details, uh, all the doubts, all the challenges that the customer has uh, once he's selecting sofa, desk, chairs, or uh, kitchen furniture, uh, we're increasing the um, the possibility that the customer is going to uh, buy our products. That we are going to answer all of this uh, all of these challenges that he has with this with this uh, uh, selection. As we all know, buying furniture is not an easy thing. Uh, you are you need to consider many aspects of uh, uh, the location of this furniture, the style you have uh, in the room where uh, where the furniture is going to be to be located. All the details about the quality, the fabric, the materials, uh, the colors. So good understanding of the challenges of the customer and uh, the right answers for the for these challenges are the key to uh, to the success of um, of helping of helping the customer with making making the uh, making the decision uh, the decision about, about this product. The same is with the descriptions. So once we talk about um, this text description where we can uh, read about about furniture, um, you know, people people read because they are looking for uh, an information and they are in the decision making process. So they want to learn something more about this product. So we on one side need to understand what kind of information would be important for them uh, and how to prepare the right the right description that can answer those uh, those needs. So the description saying that it's, it's a nice furniture, uh, it's, not, it's not probably very relevant for the customer. The customer is looking for specific details and those details will be different in case of sofa. Will be interest, uh, you might be interested in what will happen uh, once you spill coffee on it or once it gets dirty. Are you able to wash it? Are you able to take off the cover? Are you able to, uh, what, what, what you can do in such case? Uh, it's not a challenge when, when you look at the chairs or when you look at the table, but uh, the table will have different challenges about the height. 
uh, is it able to to change and adjust the height uh, in case you have a kid or uh, um, or for some other some other reason? So understanding you know the challenges of the customers allows you to prepare a good product information and allows you to prepare a right right type of uh, description. So I hope that answers the question. Another, another question here uh, from Jakob, um, and that that is how in e-commerce the issue of shipping the large size products uh, such as furniture how can that be sorted and I, I guess one of the examples is a little bit of what what um you did at uh, for castorama isn't it uh yes the, the shipping of the um shipping of the products um it has uh, like two challenges on one side it's still a user user side so the user must understand and he's interested in okay so i like this so far how am i going to receive it are you going to deliver it to my um house are you going to help me uh and bring it to my home or are you going to just let me know that it's in the closest shop and now it's my challenge how am i going to uh, to pick it up from shop and deliver deliver to home so on one side it's um uh it's a user challenge when he makes a decision and he needs to clearly understand uh, about the delivery options uh if he can handle this option if he's able to uh, uh to cover the challenge of uh, bringing the sofa on the first floor on his own or he needs some some help with it on the other hand it a very a lot of details depends also on your business model so if you are a pure 100 percent only online shop um uh, with furniture you don't have uh, you don't have your um, brick and mortar shops when your users can pick up uh you need to think how you will deliver uh the products and also with the delivery uh it's important how you will um support your customers with uh, with returns when they, when, once they receive sofa they put them in the room and they realize it's not the right size and the sofa is too big uh, and they would be interested in changing the sofa to a smaller to a smaller one how you can pick it up how you can how you can deliver there is no um one universal uh, uh role everything depends on the uh products you have and everything depends on your business model that you are uh that you are working with so the way um the way you are organized some of the companies are using an external companies for shipping some of the companies are having their own um uh, transport uh, services and uh, staff to 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 help customers Customers to to install the product, so everything everything depends here. The the one thing we have to remember is we have a, a user that is making a decision about uh, furniture not only by checking you know how the product looks like, but also being aware that uh, he has to get this product somehow, uh, and uh, he might have a, a different challenges you know to bring it up uh, to. To bring it up to the room um, when, for some reason, you know, it's like a buying a, a piano. Not necessarily you will be able to uh, bring it uh, into your house through the main uh, door that you have, and you might need some uh, some very specific support uh, and help of some 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 technicians to, to uninstall part of the furniture and install it back uh, once it's inside of the inside of the house. So there is no universal rule. You just have to remember about users that um, at least most of them are aware that uh, they are buying a big product. It's not a pair of shoes. We don't really care how they are uh, delivered because you can just take it uh, to your hands and bring it mm, to your wardrobe. Uh, here, uh, there are some challenges. The user will consider the challenges. And uh, online furniture shop uh, should convince customers that they are also thinking about uh, this process. They are following this process and they are giving some options uh, to support customers with it. Okay, thank you, Boris. Um, actually, on that point, I, I guess it does vary from country to country. So another part of the Kingfisher Group uh, is a, a French home uh, products uh, operation that includes beds and things like that. And it's called Butte in French, B-U-T. Mm -hmm. And I know that um, they, they offer a service where you book a van. So you can order stuff 
and then you can book your van you drive to the store where you're going mm -hmm. to collect it you leave your car there and you collect your van and you then have a time slot to take the van with the products loaded to back to your house or apartment and then return the van uh, to complete the delivery so it is very specific it alters from market to market uh, country to country there is another question if i may boris um this is from lisa and uh, lisa's basically saying can you please advise on the legalities of uh returns avoiding returns i that can we only offer returns on faulty products second question are there any distant selling rules for guidance mm -hmm. uh, mm, of course the we're in the in the EU, so we've got uh, we've got some restrictions about uh, customers' right. Uh, so on one side, when you look at the returns, you need to you need to check and you need to be aware what are the customers' rights uh, with the returns, where uh, users are allowed to return the product within four, fourteen days, unless it's a custom product just made for um, just made for them. So some of the online shops uh, are trying to change a typical product uh, into a custom product in order to avoid uh, avoid this uh, this returns. So there are different there are different 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 regulations and a different um, you know and, and uh, different strategies to to approach it. Of course, um, the more comfortable the customer would feel with an option that he can return um, of the product, uh, the bigger chance that he's going to buy this product because he's not going to be afraid that uh, that he would return. On the other hand, um, if you look at if you look at uh, easy small products uh, like some like some kitchen accessories, or some very small furnitures. Uh, uh, it's not a big challenge, you know, to ship it. It's not a big challenge to return uh, or ask customers to send it to send it back. The bigger challenge and the bigger cost is, of course, with the uh, with the larger furniture. So a huge and a big wardrobe. Uh, it's a big challenge to ship it to customer, but it's also a big challenge to return it uh, from customer, especially when uh, when the customer is going to change his uh, mind and suddenly you've got a big wardrobe that you need to pick it up from the from the customer or help him deliver it uh, the right way because if he's going to do it the wrong way then the furniture may get damaged during the uh, during the process with this uh, you, some balance you need to find uh, between customers needs and the customer approach and also the business the business operations uh, the business operations on the on the other hand the more open we will be, the more options we'll give uh, to customers, uh, the better they will feel about uh, making the decision of the, um, uh, of the purchase. Assuming that the customers are aware and the return is not only a problem for the online shop, but also a problem for the customer. So he, uh, he, he's usually making a right decision because he, he doesn't want to be, uh, you know, uh, finish the, the whole process with, uh, with a big challenge of, um, you know, of, uh, of, uh, of returning the product. So here it's more a good understanding of the law and also having uh, a unique strategy about, um, about delivering products and return products and the business model that you have that you have um, um, behind it uh, if this uh, if those returns and delivery options are going to be a competitive advantage or that you can that you can compete with the others making clear communication like okay we do accept uh, free returns or we do deliver with our own uh, transport so we don't have a problem to return so please order and feel free will will help you with uh, with returning the products that for sure will help customers to 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 make the decision okay i want to buy with this shop because uh because it's much uh, much easier to um, to return just in case the product is not going to fit into uh into my room into my style into my um situation thank you 
Okay, coming back to the to the presentation, um, based on our experiences, we prepared and two products. Uh, uh, we call them accelerators. So it's a it's a magenta with a set of predefined extensions, uh, predefined features, and uh, layouts that allows us to implement it much faster. Uh, so in case of B2C, we're able to do the implementation just uh, in two weeks, um, focusing not only on the native Magento, but the native Magento with predefined uh, features, with uh, additional extensions, with um, uh, front-end template. Uh, that is a result of our 12 years of, uh, of experience working with uh, e-commerce. The same is with um, B2B. We haven't uh, haven't been talking a lot about the B2B today, but uh, furniture industry, it's also B2B. So uh, big producers that are that can have their own online platform and uh, sell the products to um, to other smaller uh, shops or individual businesses who are reselling those products. Uh, in case of B2B, we've got an accelerator that allows us to implement um, the first uh, iteration of, uh, of B2B platform just in uh, time of four up to eight um, uh, up to eight uh, weeks. So. I hope that this uh, this webinar gave you some inspiration and some insight and showed you that uh, um, furniture online is not an easy thing, uh, but it is possible with the right platform and the right approach to solve those big um, uh, those big challenges. I think what's worth to mention is also that um, the customers are changing and the, the behavior of the customer is changing. As uh, 10 years ago, we used to buy all our fashion uh, shoes uh, uh, an outfit uh, offline because we had to put them on, we had to check the quality, we had to touch them, we had to uh, check if they if they fit all right. If you look at uh, 10 years, um, the customer behavior has changed and the customers don't have a problem to buy uh, shoes uh, online to buy um to buy uh an outfits online the same will happen with the furniture uh business uh the customer uh and uh, the behavior will change so people will learn more and more that it's okay to buy sofa online that it's okay to buy a wardrobe online that online sales gives them a bigger range of um, products uh, that they have a much bigger variety of uh, brands that um, that they can choose from and it's not only limited to some shops that they have um, in their neighborhood uh, but uh, overall they can buy from from the whole country or they can even buy from the whole continent uh, like Europe what will also happen the more on furniture online um, shops will uh, will be successful will have better and better logistic solutions right now not so many um, carriers and logistics companies are ready to ship a heavy wardrobe um, because they don't have that many orders yet Once we'll have more orders we'll have different tracks uh, with the logistics companies will have a different services to um, of delivery of those uh, those type of products so if you look at time for sure it's a good momentum to start the experience start with uh, with your own um, furniture furniture shop learn and on the other hand also uh, work on changing customer um, behavior so they so they switch from uh, from buying offline to buying online especially in the current uh, situation where we we as a customer have changed because of the COVID uh, COVID crisis, and we are more willing to um, to look for products online, uh, get inspired online, and uh, change and convert this inspiration into the product uh, product purchase. Okay, Boris. Well, thank you for that. Um, I think because I think uh, our audience has been very patient. Um, there are three more questions. One from Jakob. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I've got two more that um, people have not been have been too shy to ask. So the first one from Jakob: Is it possible to implement only the function to be able to return only faulty products? So can you can can you constrain the design so it only will do returns for faulty products? 
Um, the question that hasn't been asked, you've talked a lot about Magento, mm -hmm. um, but there are other names in the place. So why Magento and not Shopify, for example, picking a, 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 another brand? And the last question, uh, Poland, why Poland? So last three questions, I think, uh, to allow um, uh, just to finish off the webinar, please. Okay. Um, I'm not sure if it's just possible to restrict the returns to specific, you know, type of uh, type of products and the situation. So it's something to discuss with uh, lawyers and check with uh, uh, with the current uh, current law how to how to restrict it uh, and 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 um, what are the customer rights. So we need to be aware that the customers they have their rights. But on the other hand, you know, um, if we restrict it, still there will be a challenge or for um, challenge for for the customers if they will clearly see that we have some limitations of returns. They might be afraid of buying from our shop, and they might um, just you know jump and go to another shop. Which, in case of internet, is so easy. You just open another window, uh, go to Google, find another shop that has a similar products, and check their conditions. If they uh, would accept uh, you know unlimited uh, returns, most probably the customer. Uh, uh, will decide to go with the with the other shop. So it's a uh, on one side a legal question, on the other side it's a it's a business strategy question. Where and how you want to convince your uh, customers to um, to buy with you, especially that you shouldn't just look at this one particular purchase. The difference between offline and online is that in online uh, in offline you have a customer who comes, he buys uh, some products, and he's out of your shop, and you cannot, uh, in most cases, do anything about it. In case of online, the customer you've got all the customer data if they agree to receive a marketing communication uh, for example for some small uh, voucher or, or some small for some small discount uh, you can come back to this customer and tell him look if you've got this uh, table we've got perfect chairs that fit into a table once you've got the chair and the table we've got sofa that can that can fit into into your room so uh, it's not only a one person purchase experience, uh, it's a long-term value of the um, of the customer. So everything is about the decision and the strategy. So maybe it makes sense to accept the return and uh, somehow solve this problem, uh, but have a very loyal customer that we can communicate and um, convince to buy another purchase because he will be 100% sure that he's safe with his purchases, he's safe with this uh, shop. The shop is delivering a good, uh, good quality and a good, good experience. Just to, augment, this... just to augment that, then um, I wonder whether the question was also about whether, um, when you're uh, when you're going through a return process uh, on a website, that actually, uh, like in Amazon's case, if you want to return something, you have to go down and break down the reason and so on, and so it, it is a two-step process there. And I think what we should do. Uh, if I if I may, uh, Jakob, is um, we will have a chat uh, after this webinar uh, about what things could be done to allow some kind of filtering of the return request uh, within Magento, so that uh, it's it's easy to diagnose um, and decide whether you're going to limit. It, obviously, Boris highlighted the legal aspect, but in addition to that, there may be things that one can do. In, on the website to make uh, it uh, um, a process that gives clarity and honesty and fairness. And if you can do that, then uh, I think you, you, you still retain the confidence. People know that there is a returns approach, but equally, they know that they've got to be fair about it. So uh, can we, if we could take that offline, Jakob, we'll come back to you on that. And, um, Boris, I think there's just two more questions to answer then. Yeah, sure. But uh, answering the best solution for not having the returns is the very good uh, product information. So the customer is not making a bad decision and he's 100% sure that he's buying what he's looking for. If we have a very basic information, wrong picture, uh, wrong description, he's going to buy the product expecting that he will receive uh, something else that he that he finally gets. So then he's uh, he's 
that uh, he's returning because he uh, it's not uh it's not fitting into his room it's not the right color it's not the right size it's not the right uh, it's not the right product so in order if you want to avoid those type of uh, returns make sure that you have a good description of the um, uh, of the product or right attributes uh, and uh, high quality high quality pictures and the customers will make more uh, accurate decisions and they're not going to return. Um, why Magento uh, for furniture uh, for furniture business? Answering the second question, um, because Magento is open and it's open source, we can customize it. Uh, we can adjust the system to specific business needs, to specific business um, uh, strategy the specific business uh, logistics so selecting magento is giving uh, is giving a chance to compete not only with the products but also with the technology and uh, some business processes um if you would go with a uh, saas solution like um, shopify so you would finish with the same system the same software and as everybody else so you cannot compete on easier returns you cannot compete on easier forms you cannot compete on the um, uh, the better customizations because you will have the system as all the other uh, players on the market so you need to focus on uh, price competition you need to focus on the other other details if you have it uh, with magento it's open so you can customize it change it and find some other competitive advantages uh, of your business processes or your uh, the way you present product the way you sell product the way you accept returns than everybody else and by 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 those by those technology differences you can also you can also compete the last question which you had about Poland, uh, we are located with our development center in, uh, in Poland, uh, which gives on one side, um, uh, if, you, if you are from the UK, uh, quite a close location so we can cooperate with the same uh, time zone, with the same understanding of uh, business, with the same understanding of uh, European culture. Uh, and for the money you would pay in the UK, you can receive much better service. You can receive uh, more uh, attention. You can receive a better, better quality. Uh, so we, we we try we try to deliver uh, something more and something better, comparing to the companies who are fully located in the UK. Well, that's brilliant. Uh, thank you very much, Boris, for uh, uh, taking the time out to talk to uh, our audience today. Um, what, in terms of follow-up, we, we thank the audience for their patience. Um, and in terms of follow-up, what we will do is we will send the attendees a slide pack here. There was one question uh, from one of the attendees that we will specifically um, uh, and, and individually respond to. If um, We have recorded this, so if you do want to share this with a colleague, please let us know. Um, and uh, we will send a link or arrange for access in some way that uh, fits with your corporate policy. So unless there's anything else, I'm going to close the session and thank you all for attending. Thank you, for, for uh, Paul, also for, for supporting me with this presentation. It was a pleasure to, uh, to run this webinar today. Bye. Thank you. Bye.